communication skills, and uh, I also taught French, French at Agnès Mosses. Okay, and now I'm a teacher trainer. Something new for me. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you this. In this document, you have the, the plan for two days class. And you can see that I've left some space for you to fill in with your maps. Okay, so maybe first let me just explain quickly uh, the way this week will be organized. So today it will be class management, so two hours. And then on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday, uh, it will be lesson plan building. So today I'm going to do much of the talking. Okay, I'm not going to work a lot. Uh, the only part where you will work, where, for which you will work, will be role plays at the end of uh, these two hours. But uh, during lesson plan building uh, course, you will have to work more, and I will be talking less. Okay? Okay, so just uh, a short introduction about teaching, because uh, teaching is not an easy job. Okay? So, maybe Jonathan is well experienced, so he knows that, but when you're a beginner, maybe you don't realize it. But it's not that easy. So first, you have a mission which is not one of the lightest missions. Your mission is to put students in the right condition to work, learn, progress, and in, in the longer range, succeed. Okay, so you have to realize your mission is very important. And uh, something you don't realize when you're a beginner is it's you and a group, but you're alone. Just imagine you're an actor on stage, but you're an actor alone on stage, and there are 20 or more pairs of eyes set on you. Okay, and what's important, if you are not a good teacher, you cannot hide. Okay, you cannot hide behind the desk or behind your laptop, you have to be here. And if uh, you're not, let's say, if you're not the, not the perfect teacher, because you cannot be the perfect teacher, but if you're not good enough, students will spot it immediately. Okay? So today I'm going to give you a few tips. But remember, I can give you tons and tons of tips. But then you have to find your own way out of this, depending on your own personality, depending on the student you are facing. So, uh, first tip, well, first, first it is the beginning of the academy here. You have to understand that this stage is a key stage. If the beginning of the year is a good start, which means that you create the correct conditions for the student to work, to take good habits, then everything will run smoothly during the whole academic year. But if it's more chaotic, if you uh, do not explain to students that there are rules within the classroom, then be prepared to waste time and energy trying to rectify the situation. So the start, the beginning of the year, is something you really have to uh, succeed. So first, what you have to do, first thing, first class with your student is you have to explain the rules. So there are different types of rules. Okay? So the rules what is expected from the student in terms of work? What is expected from the student in terms of attitude, behavior in class? 
Then there are the training centers rules. Okay. I'm not going to develop everything here because we're going to see that at a later stage. Okay. But there are the training centers rules, something that all of us have to apply. But there's also your own rules as the lecturer for your subject. Okay, so rules, um, the behavior you expect from them, work, are you going to give work, are you going to give uh, assessments, and so on. Okay, so you have to explain all this to the students. And rules in terms of materials they have to bring with them. Okay, so this is not something the training center is, um, you know, the, the training center is giving to the student. Each lecturer has to decide what the student needs to bring. Then, second uh, thing is you have to explain your subject curriculum. Not in details, okay, but explain what the main stages are going to be, the main units, uh, what the progressions will be, um, what end of year level do you expect from them, what skills are they going to master at the end of the year. Okay? Why? Because it gives meaning to their learning. Okay? If you learn something without knowing if it's going to be useful later on, uh, you are not very interested in this. So explain what the, the target is. This way, the students and you are on the same page. Okay. So do not hesitate to ask a question if you have any, okay? So any questions so far? No? I can only add yes. that the best uh, rules is typically now have safety rules as well as safety procedures. Yes, yes, of course, especially in workshop. Yeah, you're right. Then um, you have to set a class, and I'm going to, to speak about that, a class routine. Okay, so what is a class routine? Do you have any idea? Very simple. If we take a very short one hour group, class routine would be the first five minutes arrival, mm -hmm. the first five minutes after that would be taking a register, then explaining what is going to happen, and then we spend the last 35 minutes doing the work. Yes, and then is. the last five minutes would be taking in the results. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay, so the class routine, and you have to create your own for your subject, is um, things, actions, stages, you're going to perform always at the same time. So, I'm going to give you an example, just as it is, but later on, so for the, moment, for the moment, just remember you have to establish your own routine, so same action at the same time during, uh, during the period, and uh, just remember that it gives a feeling of security to the students, okay, they know where they're heading, they know that at such and such time, they have to do this and this. And um, at the beginning, you might say, oh, it's going to take me ages to do this. I don't have enough time for my lecture today. So it's going to be, yes, time consuming at the beginning. But later on, the student will integrate this routine and they will perform things on their own without you uh, asking them. Okay, so in the end, it's time saving. I'm thinking for the workshop, for instance, uh, cleaning, putting things away in the cabinets and so on. Okay, so what else do you think is important at the beginning of the the academic year. Uh, 
ensuring that the material that is given is well prepared doesn't confuse or create confusion with the student when he's starting to read and prepare. Yes. Maybe I'm a bit too far now. Okay, so yes, I think we can keep maybe this for later on during the the thing here. Maybe not right from the start. Um, is it at this stage when you explain um, how the assessment is going to be? So yes, you can explain that. Remember when I said you have to explain uh, your, the, the curriculum of your subject. Maybe yes, you can like this. have two tests or three tests. Or yes, the, the kind of test also depending on the subject. You know, assessment in workshop is not the, the same as for theory. Anything else? No. Well, my side, uh, yeah. I connect with the interaction. Between, like creating an interaction between the lecture and the student since the, it's the first time they know you. Mm -hmm. So basically, like if they have a chance to like, express themselves, telling where, where they're coming from, what they want to achieve, what they want to do, taking mm -hmm. these courses. Okay, so, so the, 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 is it at the f first period or no, during the, let's say, first week? No, it's going to be, you know, the first contract is not always important. So, on my side, I have to do it on the first, first contract so that they can ease themselves. Mm -hmm. I guess it's better to feel. Okay. Okay, so what you're saying is interesting because maybe what I'm going to say is exactly the contrary. But I'm not telling you you are wrong, okay? And that I'm right really depends on the personality you have. Okay, so I would say, well, if the students are nice and pleasant, yes, but sometimes when they're not pleasant, I think it's not the, the good way to start. Mm -hmm. But it's so, you know, it's about how you feel the students, okay? But if you have the, the feeling it's not going to be easy with them, I would say that the, the next part that you have to be even, stricter and Okay, so uh, some lecturers are very extreme. Some would tell you to not smile, mm -hmm. look very strict, wear black, okay, to, to impress the students so that they feel that. Uh, you are the one in charge and uh, okay, they, they really have to follow the rules if they're sufficient. Okay, but if they're pleasant from the start, you can do what you just explained. Okay? Okay, so strict uh, yes, so attitude, work, demanding for work, so really check and double check their work. Okay? Uh, I know some lecturer, but what they do is first week, maybe not the first class because it's impossible, but second class, short written test. And this way the students understand that for this subject, they have to work. They're not here to play. Okay? So, is it, yes. what, what do you mean by being straight? Because there are two, like, many ways of playing authority. Mm -hmm. Like, your student is it to be harsh, like, to be like a police officer? No. Or to be strict, <laughs> like, like, I have my turn, no, you have to follow my turn. Yes, but that's a good question, because I think, depending who you are, mm -hmm. being strict is not the same. Exactly. Yes, but um, they, remember, you've given them rules they have to follow. So being strict is, they have to follow these rules. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, something must happen. Okay? okay? Uh, if I can explain it is, you try to establish the pattern of consequence. You are consequent in your authority as a lecturer. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, students are like good children. They are going to try and bend the rules. Yeah. And the first opportunity that they get, they are going to do this. Mm -hmm. So your job is to keep the authority side authoritative, keep
keep it straight. But not negative, positive, like the, the pre-test where they understand, oh, this is this guy means business, we're going to work in this. We're not going to talk about the social life of students and when we need to talk yeah, about the technology. Yes. You keep them in line with what they are there to do and, for that hour. And you have to maintain a distance with them. Okay. Mm. Remember, even if you're very young, you're not their friends. Mm. Okay, that's very important that they understand you're not their friends, you're not on the same level. Okay? And remember it's at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Okay? So you have to be stricter. It doesn't mean you're going to be very, very strict and harsh uh, all year long. No, it's at the beginning. Once they follow the rules, okay, you can relax, you can reduce the pressure on them. Okay? But uh, I can I can tell you from experience. Here, yeah, the, the students are not very difficult, okay? But from experience, uh, when I taught in secondary schools in France, when the, the, the thought is chaotic, it's very, very, very difficult to rectify the situation afterwards, okay? So it's, it's really better to be stricter and relax than doing the contrary in an unruly class is very, very difficult. And if we have enough time, I'll show you some videos at the end of today's class. Okay, and if you will be able to see what an unruly class is. Yeah. I think it's also important to anything that you start off 
make sure that you are able to set the foundations from when the rest of the year will be built from there. So don't assume anything uh, if it means that you need to go back to absolute basics. Like yes, I experienced something like that over the weekend now where I was giving support to a person and I said to them, I'm going to send you an email with a link in it. And then after about the seventh time that I sent the email, and I keep on telling the person, open the email, look for the link, click on the link. Eventually the person says to me, is the link that long thing that you typed there, or is it a little picture at the top? So I actually you have to, don't use the word and assume people will know immediately what it is. If you want to introduce a word in your whatever you're doing, explain it, and you know tomorrow people will know it. And there's somebody came with it. It reminds me of the Sussex students as well with our computer skills. So we're not even to type word documents. I can remember that. Yeah. Okay, so remember then, okay, just think of this. Okay, so this way you're not going to miss it. Because what happens if you if your projection is too fast? If what you are talking about in class is far too difficult, then what will happen? They will lose interest in your subject. Okay, so uh, then I think we have one, one then, yes. Uh, so the first, no, we're done with the last one. Okay, so that was for the beginning of the academic year, so the key stage. Now, another key stage is the, the entry into the classroom and the first minute. So remember, when they arrive, they have to 
Ritchie, for instance. Of course, you have also to bring them back. They're just hello, good morning, okay? Uh, so there's greeting, and then there's the no list. So no cap, no hats, no beanie. Okay, so if they have them, they have to go to the beginning for it. Uh, we add, and that's a big problem, no cell phones. Okay, so they have to turn their cell phones off, or at least they have to switch them to flight mode. Okay? No silent mode, yes? Now, I have a concern on the mm -hmm. cap and the issue. Because it's good that Brianna is here, maybe Brianna as well. It seems like it's not a problem here, in SA, if I may say so, to be in class with the beam or the cap. I've noticed that students, some of them are completely removed when they get into class, but some of them is it's okay. And when you ask them to remove, you look like that person that has come to change their whole lives. So, the reality has been teaching for a lot. Is it really an issue to you? No, uh, it depends on the lecture. It, it comes back to the discipline in the room or in the classroom. Some lecturers prefer the removal of the caps. Other lecturers, they don't mind. Because they can still make eye contact and they can still see the students. Um, I have worked with both sides of the story. The official viewpoint of VOT is um, there's no there are no restriction. But you as a lecturer, if you feel this guy is using the opportunity to hide, to sleep, to not concentrate, not be part of the class, even in crib notes we found in the exam. I know in the exam they're very strict. Um, that's the only place where kids caps must come over. People have been hiding crib notes in the hats. So for that, where is the taste involved, I would prefer it not be there. Uh, but in general, it is a uh, free yeah. selection. Okay, but I, I'm afraid the props, official... Uh, yeah, so if that is the stand for the exit, I mean, I've got no problem either way. This is... Um, okay, yeah. But you said something very nice. You said officially, normally, officially, yeah. you're not supposed to be wearing... Yes. And it comes back to when is the exam time, when is the test time? Because during that time, that's where the students have misused that opportunity. <laughs> and because of that, the room uh, became present. Mm -hmm. But during normal class, it is not that uh, yeah. yeah. I think in the end it comes down to this beginning, setting the, yes. the tone at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you're able to tell a person, one person, uh, this is not school yet. Yeah. This is now preparing you for your professional career. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do professionally mm -hmm. from here? You as a person have to brand yourself. So are you planning to brand yourself as somebody that's laid back and caps and beanies and smoking weed? Or uh, are you somebody that wants to run forward as a professional when you approach your customers? I've set the time right because yeah, this is actually the, the, the professional look is you have either a or a uniform or mm -hmm. something proper. I mean, even my beauty, it's a golf shirt, but it's a branded shirt. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it identifies and associates me with the organization. So I was really confused. It no. It seems that it was not the problem yet. So. Uh, in the exams, they are definitely looking at it. Yes. I think personally, for, for the care of the beauties, it should be good if it is like a training center policy. Yeah. Because this guy, that really depends on the personality of the nature. Now, of course, you have to keep in mind some religions prefer having the head closed. Like the Rasta guys, I, I had the opportunity with one of my colleagues. Um, I asked the Rasta guy, you know, he take off this thing and he removed this thing. It was an explosion of hair and the thing was jumping and it was really crazy. So, never again. I don't want to see that. So I understand it keeps it actually nice and playful, but it did not hamper the student into functioning as a student. Because he was yeah. here, he was free of the working machines, he could manage his job to do. Yes. So yeah, keep that in mind. There is 
is a balance between religion and of his safety. Safety is the first thing. If somebody even comes with a tie and he's going to work on a drilling machine, forget it, time is for all. You have to consider safety first. Yes, you're right. Okay, but, but I think that Prof would like you to insist on <laughs> when you enter the classroom, you have to uh, yeah. remove your caps and so on. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the same way we can also, uh, yes, I just wanted, sorry, to finish with uh, cell phones. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe we, we could decide what the collective response can be, because I, I don't know if there's an official response when, let's imagine, a cell phone rings in class. Uh, is there in trouble? Yes, but is there an official line to follow? Or? No, what, the no. Well, because uh, can we, for instance, can we just ask the student first to turn it off mm -hmm. and then take it and then we bring it to you, especially in workshops before they get in? Everything stays in the classroom and they are that side. Okay. They don't have anything when they are in the workshop. And for the class of theory classes, we used to have a cupboard here. Yeah? Where they store everything. Okay, so you so don't need to see any of that. Okay, I just wanted to know because may, maybe we could just say. Yeah, that I think that I'm putting in a complaint because I'm using mine as, as a recording device. So now you're taking my ability to prepare myself for future lessons away and to recap. So some students are using the technology wisely. So we need to look at if they are going to use this. And again, I'm doing it in my labs. Um, Yes, but then he can work and oh, yeah. he can see the guy is recording and his flight mode and it is safe and yeah. he's got control of it. Yes, then. And the moment he drinks, he buys a beer for the girl. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's with, uh, normally, no inter interruptions. That, that's the plan of the cell. It should not mm -hmm. interrupt or interfere with the vision. Um, I must say for the BTEC students, but luckily in the center we don't have that problem. In the BTEC students, we've got a lot of students who come and they are on standby. So it might be that the company is calling them and now they have to leave the room and go back to work and function. Yeah. For that reason, the cell phones are allowed. Mm. But during, again, during the test and exam time, a cell phones are must be open. That is uh, for sure. They are also students like me. I usually use my cell phone to take pictures of what it is. So you are using the technology in advantage. Okay. Then, once again, flight mode. Yes. You can take no, 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 no. Otherwise, we are not going to make sure that you are able to not interrupt the class to see who is calling. I can try to call out. Okay, to be safe, we 
those students, we don't keep them that much in a time mm -hmm. frame mm -hmm. because they're going to take a break mm -hmm. of that. We just, at the beginning, as she said, we established first those three forms and say it's eight of them, it's not five months. And then along the way, you can see someone coming in late and she has a visa, he has a visa. But we never give them an answer to that. No, we don't. Yeah. And, and then you can see it because I was teaching here and also at BBT, and you can see the difference there. Uh, yes, so remember also if a student was absent, uh, make sure it can catch up the periods he missed. So if the student that ends up, uh, you get the other students, uh, ask someone else in the class to uh, lend his notes. Okay, so once you've taken the register, uh, oh yes, there's some, some, sorry, there's something I forgot, which should be here in fact. You have to wait for silence and attention before starting. Okay, it was so obvious, I forgot to mention that, but you need that attention before starting and telling them anything. So, once the register is taken, you can have
So it will be, uh, you have to correct these exercises. And at the same time, check uh, if each student has done his uh, homework. Okay, especially at the beginning of the year, you really have to check individually. And then later on, you'll get to know the, the lazy ones. So you can check only these ones. So remember, exercises, homework, it's also to ensure regular work and uh, check if uh, they've understood the previous class. So maybe, after correcting the exercises, you will have to re-explain a few things. Okay, do you have any questions so far? I can really say that different approach to the view these students Yes, exactly. Yeah. Especially as here, as small groups, mm -hmm. you have to do it. Of course, at BUT, you cannot check the work of 50 students, for instance. All right, I also have a question. <coughs> what is the policy for like, uh, the student that arrives late? We just say that. Yeah, we have different um, sanctions. It depends on who's the student. Does he have a record of already read? And is he uh, the reason why he arrived late? Clear, reasonable, and it depends. Usually, we have either you stay until late, we even go to you coming on a Saturday the whole morning, and uh, no lunch going to come around for this five minutes. It depends. Is it okay? Yes. 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 Okay. So. <laughs> yes. But you need to wait for sales. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? It's a psychological thing. I've done it many times. It works like a chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah, you cannot stop talking. I really hope we will have time to watch this video. Mm -hmm. I talked earlier. Uh, you cannot start uh, a class if students are talking to each other about last weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. But. Really, did, did you have any problem here with a uh, student not listening to you at the beginning of the class? Yes. Yes? yes? Mm -hmm. When they get used to us, they become comfortable and they let loose. You know, after the first year, the second year, they're like, oh, Miss Ray, how are you? So it's like that mm -hmm. before you start speaking or you enter, they start complimenting you with your structure, for example, or Mr. J, your glasses are nice, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. happens after a while. You do that. But is it really a problem that no, it's it's does it last? Mm -hmm. Because it's only one or two minutes? Uh, it's yeah. not really a problem. It's not a problem per se. I'm talking really about uh, an early class uh, arriving and talking to each other mm -hmm. uh, and they don't mind you in fact. Mm -hmm. What is the way for what people do that? The way for that, the, what you have to do is they have to be quiet before entering the classroom. Okay? So, you have to be outside, you have to greet them, and uh, they're not the one, because if you let them, uh, they will enter, they will sit where they like, and uh, let them in. They will take the space, okay? It's their space, it's not only your space. So you have to show them it's your space and not their space. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Sure. Mm -hmm. so, Do you remember electronics in the labs? When you came in, I said, you take a seat here, mm -hmm. first table, second yes, table. Then. That was first day, then. And then every week you have to sit at the same time. Mm -hmm. People were complaining, my equipment is, sorry, that's your seat. That's part of this. It's and this. I did the same here. Yeah. Okay, student has to take the, the same seat of movie. And especially at the beginning when you don't know them, mm -hmm. it's very useful just to remember. Mm -hmm. Because remember, it's not one or two students, that's 20 students. Yeah. Maybe more. Okay, but it's, uh, it's really a work from 
in the beginning of the year and you have to do the, the same thing at the beginning of each period. And it's really you have to, 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 to make a difference between what happens outside and what happens inside. Okay, so I know in secondary schools they have to line up and be quiet first. Okay, so I do or we do not have to do this here. <laughs>
So there was one of you who forgot to do his homework. Okay, but since you introduced it as the first class, there's no homework. Okay, so let's stop it at this stage. Okay, so just now so, so, some feedback. He does not know the game. <laughs> How did you feel?
classroom is that you, you will have to practice if it's not in your nature or your culture to speak louder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you will have to project your voice through the whole room so that everybody can hear you. You say, good morning ladies and gents. So that um, you, you show them there that you take control immediately. Mm -hmm. If you whisper and you talk like this, then they see up you don't have confidence. Yes, and they're very good at spotting that as well. I remember when I was big tech, then I presented electronics too. And the money was good to do. But what we did was the first period. Now, the semester before, most of these students were students I have seen while I was studying. And then the next semester, I'm now a presenter, uh, a junior lecturer. In my and the first period I did, and that, that's advice I got from a senior professor, and he said, take your students, let them come in. And once they are calm, tell them, please, this is the guidelines that has been set. We need to finish this syllabus. I am capable of teaching the tricks to you guys of how the subject works. And just by spending that five minutes and convincing them, I know what I'm talking about. And some guys did challenge me on the spot, but this and this, and I could give them a reasonable answer. They realized, okay, once we are in there, we're going to work, and they'll group the past at the end of the semester. We did very well. Um, whereby other fellow students who did the same did not take that immediate control, they lost it completely. And some of their groups, a uh, large amount, failed at that semester. So the, the, the trick right. is get you guys their attention first. Um, the, the psychological thing of keeping quiet until everybody realizes, but we've been sitting here for 20 minutes and the guy hasn't complained, he hasn't moaned, he hasn't made a squeak, he's just standing there watching us. The, the, the students, they feel, okay, something is up. And then we will respond in a more positive way. So there are different ways that this plays out. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. How can one work on his own personality to become a room filler, if I have to call it so? Or <laughs> how do you make people scared of you? The beautiful is, I never do that. You, you have to be an actor. Yes. The acting is See? Comedian. I'm extremely sure. And I'm unable to, if I'm not in a classroom, I'm unable to talk to a big audience. Mm -hmm. What do you do then to be here and practice? Practice. practice. So, does uh, the way you dress uh, yes. the impact? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, and so, first, when I started, I was very young. I looked more like a teenager than an adult. <laughs> and I'm small. So what I did at the beginning is heels. So I make me taller. Now I don't care anymore, but you know, see, I finished your And yes, wearing dark colours to look straight. Yeah, remember a red tie. Stay away from red ties, it makes the students aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Just like swords. <laughs> But I think what you're doing is also you're doing public speaking yes. with interaction. With public speaking, you you have to prepare like you will do, but make sure that you prepared your whole class. You are familiar with what you want to cover. Mm -hmm. If you are familiar with what you want to do, then you've got that authority for you. Yeah. But if you wonder what you're going to cover or you want to make it up as you're going, so then pick it up. Also. I used to ask my wife, ask me questions, I would give her the book, she's got no idea what's going on. And she would then, she doesn't understand this funny word. Mm -hmm. And she being not a technical person, that actually just gave me the opportunity to think of how would I answer that. And then after that, all my problems, for, for 20 years at least, I explained as if you are a five-year-old. Because if you can yes. understand, yes. if you can explain to the next student. And also, you have to plan yes, you have to uh, the, the, the students questions, questions and the students yeah. difficulties because if they ask yes. you something and you don't know what to answer no, you, you, you lose credibility yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Also, is it necessary that at the beginning of the year, maybe to motivate the students that you can do it, whatever you dream? You can do that. Is, yes. that, is it helpful to do that also motivation? Yes, of course. Yes. And once again, it's really a question of your own personality, how you feel the students. That there's, there's not one answer for all lecturers, mm -hmm. all groups. Yes. That's also part of the difficulty of the teaching job. Okay, yes. One last thing because we're really, really late. Okay. No, I just remember the one of my teacher here in PMT. It was kind of special. First day in class, we like went in class and we start talking. And the lecture just sit on this table and start to stare at us. And I feel like just staring, you know, not talking. Yeah, the whole period. Yeah, he didn't say anything. And then we were wondering what what's happening next. He didn't say anything. And what happened the next period? No, he was standing there. We kept we kept quiet all those Yes, you will. I've done that as well. She worked. So at the point of keeping quiet, do you want them to pay attention? It's about respect. What you can do also is, is like I think in that instance he allowed the students to uh, specifically realize the thing behind it is, okay, now you're talking, I'll allow you to talk. Yeah. But when I'm talking, then it's my turn. And respect goes yes. both ways. Talking about yeah, authority in the past, so of course your voice, <coughs> but also your stare.
shouldn't be interrupted. Okay. And um, also insist on audibility. Because I remember, especially at the beginning of the year, when the students are very shy, uh, you, they, they want to answer. Okay, so you have to insist on audibility because what this student says might be very useful for, for you, of course, but not only for you, for the whole group. Okay, so ask the student to repeat louder. Now, you as a lecturer, you know, it's always the same kind of student who wants to answer your questions. Okay, the good students, the ones who are not shy. But it's your job to go and get the shy ones, to go and get uh, the ones with more difficulties to participate as well. So what you can do is uh, keep very easy questions for the students who, are, who, who have difficulties, who lack confidence, okay? and then the more difficult questions for the good ones. Okay? Um, Yes, yeah, so, sorry, I'm going fast, but we have very little time left now. Now, the note taking, which is another problem. So, remember here, our students are coming from poor backgrounds. And do not expect them to be experts at note taking. Okay, so, especially at the beginning of the year, you have to make sure that. Uh, then the notes are properly organized. Okay, so just walk into the classroom and, and check. Okay. Check if the titles are underlined, if the titles are visible first. Okay. Check that the notes are dated. Uh, check if the different forms are numbered. And do not hesitate at the beginning of the year to write a lot of things on the board. Okay. And if you see it's really something very difficult for them, then you will have to learn then how to take notes properly. Okay. And then little by little we can write less and less on the board. Uh, and yes, also, I don't know if you're going to ask them to use uh, files or notebooks, I don't know if you have specific expectation depending on your subject, but make sure it's organized. Okay, so if you give handouts, uh, it has to be classified properly. Okay, no loose document, no torn document, no crumpled document, please. Uh, no mixing of different subjects and so on. Okay, um, clearly organized notes and files mean easy learning. If you have, uh, I don't know, some notes here and the rest in another file, so I can work. Yeah. <laughs> then, also, I would like to just to mention that you have to use the whole classroom space. It means that, um, for instance, me, uh, I never see it. I think if you are here behind your desk talking like this during mm -hmm. one or two hours, it's extremely boring. Okay? So you have to walk. Uh, you can talk from the front of the classroom. You can talk from the back of the classroom. You can sit on an, an occupied desk, okay, but change position. This way that the student has to follow you and this way uh, it prevents monotony. Um, and, and yes, and at the same time, while walking or talking from different places in the classroom, you can check the note-taking. You can check if they are doing their exercise the right way. And remember, some students are very shy. And if you stay here and ask, okay, any questions? Do you have any problems with this or that? Some will not dare tell you, I have a problem, I do not understand this. But if you are you know, walking close to them, maybe you will say, oh, yes, uh, what do we have to do here? I don't understand. Are we allowed to 
insist on a specific type of note taking. That specific note taking allows you to go through the year as a team, almost as a, like a knowledge base or a mind plan. So, you know, I want to show you yeah. this is my first, my first hour of right mm -hmm. in this setting everything up. Then we can teach them about what I would like, I would like them to do is make sure that everybody knows how to use mind maps. If you've got to otherwise how to draw it, I mean, you can work on that mind map throughout the whole year as groups, as both well projects and some mm -hmm. knowledge base. So can we set a specific method of note-taking that you want in your lectures? All of us or? I think it's, I don't know what you think, but I think it really depends on your subject. For instance, me teaching foreign language, I cannot do this. Because they don't know how to, they have to take notes in a language they don't know. So uh, I write a lot and I give them a lot of documents they have to fill in. Because writing a document is too slow. But, but then in other subjects, I don't know. Maybe I've got to say, it's up to you. But I think if you introduce one specific type of not taking, it can be useful in another subject as well. It's a nice thing for instance about mind maps is I would like to um, I'll ask I'll put to talk about it. I mean specifically we can introduce mind maps. Uh, I've got a couple of books on introducing them to pre-primary school kids. So you're able to get a person from grade one to build up a knowledge base on all these subjects and help them to link everything. Because then you do that, you've got something that looks like in mind. The specific reason why in mind as well as design. Yes, and it can be helpful for memorizing these weapons. And useful language. Mm -hmm. Let's say one week 
Find the side of a square. Okay, the side of a square is 8. Find its area.
violating a person to a certain extent, you need to be really careful. So what I appreciated the fact that he stopped everything, stood closer to him, fixing him. Maybe after that, but do you think it was really efficient? No, it wasn't though. But he tried. <laughs>
Now, to show you, it's a very difficult situation. As the lecturer, you feel very uncomfortable and guilty because you realize you are not a good lecturer. But to show you uh, the situation is not that desperate, let's show what he does six months later.